So one of the things that frustrates me the absolute most when I'm watching club level doubles matches or USTA matches is that net players do the same exact thing every time. So I'm sure you've seen it. You might even participate in it where there's a cross court rally, maybe even a down the line rally. And the net player moves forward, moves back to the cover of the alley, then moves back to the service line, then moves forward again. And they do the same thing every time as the ball goes back and forth. And that is not what the best doubles players in the world do. So we're gonna talk about how to be unpredictable in kind of an intentional way that'll help force more errors from your opponent and help your partner out at the baseline. So the first way we want to be unpredictable is with our movement. So this is mostly talking about lateral movement. Uh, moving forward and backwards is really going to depend on offense and defense, and we have some separate lessons on that. But with our lateral movement, we want to really be unpredictable and keep the opponent at the baseline guessing. So if they're hitting a forehand from back here behind the baseline, maybe on one ball we poach, and then on the next one we move towards the middle early, and then we fake. And then on the next one, we just pinch a little bit towards the middle and give up the alley where it's a going to be a low percentage shot. So we want to be unpredictable with our movement and keep this player guessing. And that's going to create a lot of doubt in their mind and put a lot of pressure on them to hit a really quality cross court ball. So a lot of times what you'll find if you're able to do this throughout the match is you're going to force more errors even when you don't poach or when you don't move a whole lot because they're going to think that you might move because you've already been doing that throughout the match. Another area we want to be a little bit unpredictable is with our timing. So we can actually time our poach early or late. And you really need to be on the same page with your partner in this scenario. So you can wait and poach as the opponent is about to make contact with the ball. What a lot of club players do is they wait to see if it's a weak ball to poach on, which I don't typically recommend, but obviously if it is a weak ball, then you can go and go ahead and, and go for it. Um, and then something else you can do that club level players almost never do is poach really early to force them into an uncomfortable down the line shot. And but when I say you need to be on the same page with your partner, if they know that you're going to be doing this, especially if they see you poach early, they can come across and cover the line behind you. A lot of pro level players will call a particular poach on the second or third ball so that this baseline player knows to go behind them. The last thing we want to consider when we're being unpredictable is the score. So when I talk about that early poach, it might not be a great idea to do that if you're down 1540 serving and they have say double break point or a set point. But if you're up 4015 in the game, it might be worth the risk to see if they can make this down the line shot. And if they do, you're, you're still up in the game 40-30, so no harm done there. But staying unpredictable with all this, keeping the score in mind, is going to really help you become a more effective player at the net. So next, I wanna go over a few examples of players being unpredictable at the ATP and WTA level. So we're gonna look at examples of three different points, one ATP and two WTA. And the first one here is Matt Ebden. So his partner is serving. You can see it's a second serve. And I want you to watch how uh, he moves at the net. So straight off of the serve, he's starting um, pretty far back for a server's partner in position, but it is a second serve. And he moves early uh, to poach here, it forces the down the line return. His partner obviously uh, knows that and covers this down the line return. And then from here, he's pinching towards the middle. So this is considered a pinch during a down the line rally. What I see from a lot of club level players during down the line rallies is that they will stay uh, over here and really try to cover their half. But really, you need to be a little bit more forward, um, kind of pinching towards the middle, even to the left of the center service line like Matt does here. Uh, so he stays unpredictable with that, and then eventually he poaches on the next one and is able to force an error. So we'll watch that back in uh, full speed here. So again, we're looking at a second serve. The poach off of the serve, the aggressive pinch during the down the line rally, 
and then a full poach when he sees the opponent on defense. Uh, and they have to throw up a lob and ultimately miss. So um, that's some really good movement there at the net from Matt that uh, forces an error as well. So one of the best net players on the WTA Tour is Shea Su Wei. So she is on the near side. She's the server's partner again. Uh, and she's actually playing in the Australian Open doubles finals uh, tomorrow as I record this. She just won the mixed doubles final uh, yesterday. So you can see she poaches directly off the serve. And this is a really wild point. She poaches again, um, or maybe you'd call this a pinch. It looks like she's trying to poach uh, from the down the line rally position. And then she just kind of stays in the middle of the court knowing that the opponent can't really hit this ball cross court. Their partner is in the way at the net. Um, so they might hit their partner in the back. And if she goes kind of along this red line path, uh, Shea Su Wei can actually cover this with her forehand volley here. Um, so her only option cross court really is a lob, which gives Elise Mertens uh, plenty of time to get over here to cover that. So she moves back over to the middle, stays down low on this ball because she has no time to react and Mertens is back there to cover and then pinches again, forcing an error. So a lot of just really unpredictable kind of strategic movement here from Shea. So we'll play this again in full speed. And again, this is the type of point that you'll really never see at club level doubles because we just don't move this much. Um, and I know a lot of us are not quite as mobile as some of these pro players, but the ball is also moving a lot slower as well. So it's relatively um, similar in terms of how fast the ball is moving to how fast we are moving. So we're going to look at one more point from this same match. On the other side of the net, we have Shuko Aoyama. So she is the server's partner in this situation. She's only five foot one, and she's one of the best net players on tour. And she uh, does a really good job with her fakes and poaches. So you can see straight out of the gate, she takes kind of a jab step here uh, and fakes and forces a down the line return. She would probably want this volley back so that she could kind of put this away and angle it off the court. Uh, but she puts it back to Shea Sue here, who's coming forward with kind of a continental grip to scoop this up. So this is a ball that a lot of players are going to stay on. And sometimes Shuko will stay on this. But in this case, she poaches and forces a down the line lob. And you can see both players are really moving a lot. So there was another fake there from Shuko. She is leaning to her left and then going back to cover the alley. Same for Shea on the other side of the net. You can see she's kind of covering the middle saying, you know, the alley's open. Go ahead and take it. And then recovering to get the volley here. And then she poaches on the next ball, similar to the one that Shuko had earlier. Um, and she actually gets beat down the line. And I showed this for a reason because when you're unpredictable like this, you want to be getting beat down the line on occasion. Uh, but you want to do a lot of this movement where if you get beat down the line on some of those lower risk points. So this is a return point for Shea and Mertens. Uh, and she uh, it's also early in the match. It's, it's 15 all. So this is a low risk point to kind of set a tone early in the match that, hey, I'm going to be really aggressive at the net. And I'm going to be unpredictable, and you're going to have to hit really good shots to, to get the ball by me. Um, so you have to kind of change your mindset and be okay getting beat down the line because you know you're going to be able to force more errors by being unpredictable and get more easy volleys as well. If you want to become a smarter doubles player and start winning more matches, then join the Tennis Tribe Double Strategy newsletter. Every single Thursday, I'll send you a new doubles tip or tactic that you can use in your very next match. And when you join, you're gonna get a free guide on how to play with more confidence and start dominating at the net in doubles. My name's Will, I'm the founder of the Tennis Tribe, and over the last five years, I've worked with players at every level of the game, from USTA 3-0 players, all the way to Division I college programs, as well as some of the top 10 doubles players in the world. And on Thursdays, with this strategy newsletter, I share that knowledge and advice that I've gained over the years with you. So to sign up, you can go to thetennistribe.com. And again, you'll get that free net play guide when you join.